Hello, foodie friends, and welcome to the very last episode of our war rationing series for World War II. And this time, we're going to the Great White North, which is Canada, to see what kind of recipes did they have for their food rationing. Now, Canada has a little bit of a different history with World War II as opposed to the United States, because as they remained a dominion of Great Britain for a lot longer than the United States did, they had closer ties to Great Britain. So consequently, they declared war on Germany just eight days after Germany invaded Poland. Now, because of World War I, they were able to quickly put in their old rationing and policies back into place and begin almost immediately. Now, one of the reasons for this is because they were exporting tons of their food over to Great Britain to try and alleviate the suffering that was going on over there with all the bombings and agriculture being disrupted by the Germans. And lucky for us, there is a Canadian website, which I will put in the description box below, that puts a lot of their war rationing cookbooks as PDF files that you can go and look at for free, and they are absolutely fascinating. I highly recommend just perusing through them and maybe trying a recipe or two on your own. Now, I decided to pick and I will say, it was extremely hard to narrow down what I wanted to do for this one. But I happened upon a cake, and it was called an eggless, butterless, and milkless war cake. Now, I imagine that this was something that was made probably towards the end of the week when your rations was running out maybe you had already used up your coupons from your ration book or maybe the store had just run out who knows but i can't imagine a housewife making this uh when she had things available to her so i was really intrigued on what kind of a cake would taste like without the eggs butter and milk and that seemed to me like a really extreme rationing recipe. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and make. I think it's very fitting that the last episode we do is probably one of the most rationed recipes of all. So let's go ahead and get started. But first, just a reminder, our question and answer video, I would like to go ahead and put that out as soon as possible. And so if you have a question that you would like to ask me, Mitch, or both of us, go ahead and put that in the comment section below and we will include your question in that video. So let's go ahead and make whatever this is gonna turn out to be. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so I'm kind of excited because it has filled our entire house with kind of the smells I would associate with Christmas. Yeah, it smells really good. Yeah, all that cinnamon and cloves. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. But let's see if the cloves is too much. Teaspoon kind of scared me a little, but uh -oh. yeah, let's just, let's just dig in. Nothing to be afraid of. No. Just use the whole teaspoon. Yeah. Because it really works in this. I really enjoy it. And something I noticed, it's kind of the bite that keeps on giving. Yeah, it's like every bite I get a little bit more flavor of something else. Yeah, like the, the more you're chewing, the more it's just kind of filling yeah, with flavor. Yeah, it's like a flavor evolving thing in your mouth. Yeah. It actually is really like surprisingly good. For not having eggs, milk, or butter, you don't miss it. You're not deprived, I don't think. I can't um, even tell. Like that to me, to just tasting it. Yeah. There's I can't tell any difference of like any other bread recipe that has I mean other than I can't like either. it's a strong flavor. Right, but a good one. But a good one. And I mean I I think adding the egg, milk, or butter would have wouldn't have added anything to the flavor. At no, all. I don't either. It's kinda of like the swans down we did at the beginning. Where it was like, you know, we just didn't miss, right? you know, the, the missing ingredient. Right. And I think this is the same way. I mean, for not having hardly anything that traditionally goes into a cake. Now, you do have your two cups of brown sugar. So that would have taken, yeah, you know, helps. quite a no. bit of, yeah, it helps. <laughs> <laughs> but that would have taken probably quite a bit of your rations, right. you know. But you're saving on everything else right so like i said at the beginning i'm pretty sure this is well when i said in the beginning i'm pretty sure this is a cake that they would have made at the end of the week when their rations you know ran out now that i've tasted it i'm not so sure this might have been a beginning of the week cake yeah because i mean that's just kind of how good it is i can see it with a good cup of tea or coffee you know, that's gonna be a really good cake to go with it, or even just an after dinner cake. Yeah, just just to eat afterwards. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just, it kind of just works for all kinds of different things. Yeah. And one thing I did notice in hunting the internet uh, for different recipes, I went ahead and Googled this one too. This particular cake has had several incarnations mm. um, throughout World War One the Great Depression, and then it was brought back out for World War II. Okay. So you see a lot of recycled recipes right. um, from the first World War brought into the second, uh, which I think is really smart. And I yeah. think, you know, it, it, if it worked then, it's gonna work, you know, the second time around. Yeah. So I think that was a really cool thing to like, they were pulling out vintage recipes to help them through hard times. And I think that's a really kind of a neat remembrance, yeah. you know, of the first time they had to go through this. So, wow, Canada came through. I know, they got some good bread. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we, we've had some, so all in all, yeah. I don't really, I'd say the only semi-disappointing recipe we had was probably the second one with the swans down the little hard biscuit <laughs> <laughs> which guys looked exactly like the picture yeah. that they had in the recipe book and it wasn't until after we stopped filming that mitch looked through the book and he was like hey don't those look really similar <laughs> like they were hard little biscuits back then yeah. and they're hard little biscuits now yeah. you know besides that i think this month has been really kind of exciting yeah. and actually came up to my expectations you know we've not had a bad war rationing recipe yet and in a lot of ways i think that kind of shows you how much you can do without if yeah. you need to yeah although you know you'd have to caveat that with the fact that like fixing these would take longer mm -hmm. than just going and getting something at the store like oh. we do now a lot of the time so yeah not, yeah if you're working full time oh yeah oh, that if kind of thing. This, <laughs> this is definitely a harder 
thing to do. Yes, th this would be. Now, it's interesting that you bring that up because I was reading an interesting article about women's role on the Canadian home front. Mm. And they were conscripted, just like American women, to work on the farms and in factories because the men were gone. Yeah. You know, these women were expected to work, gosh, you could do 10, 12, 14 hour shifts at a factory, churning out bullets, other munitions, uh, warships, airplanes. These women were churning out, you know, all the accoutrements of war, right? right? And then they had to come home and bake and cook and do all this other thing. So if you had a mother, you know, your grandmother, you know, if you had a grandmother at home that could watch your kids while you're in the factory, she could step in and right. do a lot of the cooking. That would be great. Some of these women did not have that option. So you're working and you're taking all the extra time. And it was an interesting article, you know, talking about how a lot of the workers' protections were lifted during that time in Canada. <clears throat> so you didn't get wage protections, you didn't get overtime protections, Man. you didn't get a lot because you were expected to make as many bullets as you could. Because we're at war, this is what you do. Uh, so it is interesting that we look at this and we say, wow, that, that, you know, like this took about an hour in our oven, right? Let alone the time it took me to make it, which wasn't bad. It, it was a pretty easy cake, you know, but you're babysitting this thing for about an hour, yeah. um, trying to get other things done around the house, kind of like I was doing. Um, but add a 12 hour shift at a bomb factory, you know, where, I mean, it's just, yeah. it, it was a, it's a whole new perspective, yeah. <laughs> you know, on things. And the same would have been for American and British women, yeah. you know, who were putting in the same time and then having to come home and put in another shift yeah. before they could go to bed. So yeah, it's, it, it's been a crazy month of learning a lot of really cool things and kind of seeing how the greatest generation they really went through it oh yeah you know they, they went through a lot of stuff but we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up so we can finish our cake really hope you try this one because mm -hmm. you're gonna be surprised at this one and i think you're really gonna like it especially if you're a big fan of anything like pumpkin spice yeah you know with your cinnamon and your clove I think you're really gonna like it. And it'll make your house smell good. <laughs> and it'll make your house smell good, like Christmas. Yeah, yeah you're gonna like that too. And so stay tuned for next month because we're shifting gears and we're going outside mm. because this guy here built me a rocket stove outside. I really wanna try it. And I've got a cookbook on cooking on a wood stove and I think we can use that thing to approximate it. So we're gonna be making some good stuff and some of it is gonna be some really good down home Southern cooking. Wow. Yeah, so this is gonna be a lot of fun. Can't wait for that. So we'll see you then. Thanks for watching this one. Bye. And if you like historical cooking and unusual cookbooks, here's two more videos you might enjoy. And make sure to like and subscribe for more foodie adventures.